Well, I'm Luke Hatfield, alongside me, Matt Mayer, our chief sports right here at the Express and Star. Matt, uh, it's been a busy old transfer deadline day. Uh, not so busy for Villa in terms of the incomings, but we did see a late one come in, Borja Baston. Well, it's busier than we expected at, say, five o'clock. Yep. Um, you know, it, it looked like Villa weren't going to, you know, get anybody in. Mm -hmm. They have got somebody in. It's a striker. It's a striker that nobody had on their, you know, their, their list or nobody had mentioned until it emerged about six, around about six pm mm -hmm. that he was on his way to to Villa uh, or to Bodymore Heath for a medical. Um, I think the the, the, the phrase, and we've got to be fair um, among supporters, is, mm -hmm. is underwhelming. Yeah. Um, you know, this is a, he scored seven goals in forty one appearances for Swansea in three and a half seasons. Two two of those seasons he spent back on. Back in Spain mm -hmm. uh, on loan, he does tick the box in that he's got Premier League experience, yeah. but he only scored one goal mm -hmm. in 18 appearances in the 2016-17 uh, season. After becoming Swansea's record signing, mm -hmm. 15 and a half million pounds he joined them for. So, it, on the surface, it doesn't look a particularly inspiring move, but I think essentially what this is is it's it's. It's insurance mm -hmm. against a you know an injury crisis. Um, Villa are already light in the in the striker department, mm -hmm. um, but they do have Mbwana Samata who joined earlier in the month, and they do have Keenan Davis who is now back fit. Mm -hmm. So I think but the idea is Baston is is back up to uh, to those those two players. He's he's cheap. Yeah. Um, Villa are essentially taking over his contracts, which is due up in the summer. Uh, for the last six months, a free transfer. They've just mm -hmm. got to pay his wages, and who knows? I mean, if he, if he, you know, it's an opportunity for him. He's still only 27 years old. You know, if he, if he takes off, you know, then he, he's got the carrot of, of potentially earning a deal in the summer. Mm -hmm. This is a deal that has been driven very much so by the by the sporting director mm -hmm. Suso. Um, he knows the player from their time at Atletico Madrid when he was sporting director there, and. Uh, Baston was coming through the ranks, yeah. so he knows all about him. But it, it's really, you know, I, I think it's fair to say Villa did not get after the signing of Samata, mm -hmm. January the twentieth. You know, they were still keen on another striker. I don't think they envisaged adding Borja Baston. Mm -hmm. Probably up until the last moment where they decided, right, we haven't got the players we really wanted, but we've got an opportunity to bring somebody in on a relatively cheap deal, mm -hmm. low risk. And you know, it, it gives us a cover. It's cover mm -hmm. in an area where they are short. Um, there's going to be a lot, and I, know, and I know, obviously, from some of the responses we have, there's a lot of fans that are disappointed. Mm -hmm. um, you know, they've expected the, the club to get a striker in. They're questioning why they haven't, perhaps, you know, splashed out more money. Um, but, but the fact is that this is not protect, this is not really a reflection of, of the work Villa have done this month. They've worked mm -hmm. very hard to to get deals over the line. It's more what they didn't do last summer when the market was far, far more agreeable. Yeah. I think in hindsight, um, they would they would have signed another striker mm -hmm. last summer. They only signed Wesley. They felt they had enough. They got to sign the wingers in El Ghazi and Trezeguet. They felt they had enough going forward. They still might have enough, mm. but if it turns out they don't have enough, and let's, let's be honest, you know, it, it's all about scoring goals. You know, it, it, they're going to need somebody to step up. Mm -hmm. I think there's a lot of pressure on Samata now. There yep. already was, uh, and and obviously Kenya Davis as well. But if it does all, if it does end, the season does end with Villa in the bottom three, I think they'll they'll look back on last summer and rue the fact that perhaps, you know, they they didn't focus enough on bringing another striker in. Mm. January has been a very difficult window, not just for Villa, other clubs. I mean, Manchester United have signed yeah. Adi Ogalo. Spurs have struggled. Spurs as well. have not got anybody in. Chelsea have not bought, got anybody in. Olivier Giroud. Villa came in earlier in the window has been left in limbo, mm -hmm. so it just was you know the, the wrong window to try and to leave themselves all this work to, to leave themselves all this work to do. Admittedly, they were unlucky with the injury yeah. to Wesley on New Year's Day, that changed their plans. But it's that failure to bring in cover last summer, a backup striker, an experienced striker. Mm. That's really you know where they where they went wrong. Not necessarily the work that they've done this month. They have worked you know round the clock. And they have tried. They have they have tried a lot of avenues, but it's just been a really difficult month to get things done. It has been, but overall, looking at the window, how would you how would you rank Villa's window? Because they got an experienced experienced goalkeeper in Pepe Reina. They've made a very good they signing. They've made a very good in Pepe Reina, um, and and he could still prove, you know, 
crucial mm-hmm. in this in this relegation dogfight. Uh, I think Danny Drinkwater, you know, has, has shown, shown signs of you know kind of the, the player he can be. Admittedly, he still lacks match fitness. Yeah. Um, but it is all down to the strikers, and we don't know. We've seen a bit of Samata on Tuesday night. Oh, I was quite impressed. I think a lot of people, I've spoken to quite a few people, you know, who watched um, Tuesday's game. We thought mm-hmm. they were, you know, and it sounds like we were thinking, oh, we weren't expecting a lot from him. We just didn't know. We hadn't, mm-hmm. Nobody had seen that much of him. I think a lot of people watched him on Tuesday night and thought, you know what, he's got something. He's getting into you position. Know, he's getting, he hadn't played for a month. Yeah, there was that big chance, which, you know, but for the late goal, might have been looked back on a bit more. Mm-hmm. But I think a player with match sharpness, which he probably wasn't as sharp as he could be, I mean, I played for a month. I think, that he, you know, he gets there, you know, mm-hmm. in a few weeks' time. So there were promising signs, but they are short up front. Mm-hmm. They are short up front. Um, you know, look at Southampton and, you know, they've got Danny Ings. You know, you've got a goal scorer, you know, that can someone to get you 10 or 12 goals. The chances are you're not going to go down. Mm-hmm. Do Villa have that player? You know, they've got Jack Grealish, but he can't do it all. He can't do it all on his own. Um, and, and it just, you feel that they've been able to get a player in. Maybe even Islam Slimani. I mean, that was probably the one deal that Villa would have looked at. And they were still hopeful, even this week, that Monaco, who were, Slimani's on loan there. Mm-hmm. He wants to, you know, he wanted, was, he wanted to leave Monaco. Monaco have got him a season long loan. And we're saying, Fair enough. Well, if you want to break this loan, you're going to get, have to give us quite a bit of money, yeah. which you know clubs like Villa weren't prepared to pay. So they were hoping that in the final days of the window, Monaco might relent. Yeah, they, they looked at Jay Rodriguez, but they had the issue. You know, Burnley were also in the relegation dogfight. There's yeah. no way they're going to let let them go. Ditto Glenn Murray mm-hmm. at uh, you know at, <coughs> at Brighton, and also the fact that. Someone like Christian Benteke, who I don't think it was ever a serious target anyway, he's on huge money, yeah. £125,000 a week, and Villa just aren't going to do, weren't going to do a, a short-term deal for a player on big money, um, you know, that might either, well, cause them problems with financial fair play, and mm-hmm. they were never going to be able to, in the market for Jared Bowen, they just could not spend that much money yeah. in this window. They spent £127 million in the summer, that's when they did the bulk of the business, they were never planning to do as much as I have done mm. in January. It was dictated by events. Um, and they were never going to do a, a deal that, that potentially left them with a burden mm. should they get relegated. We've just had a discussion here about Bowen's you know, ongoing move to, to West Ham. Yeah. You know, he does not want a relegation clause in his contract. West Ham 17th. Mm. And that is the issue. Any good agent is going to say, yeah, and Villa would have experienced yeah. this as well, you know, all Villa's players will have relegation, re- relegation clauses in their contract so that they their wages drop. Mm-hmm. But no good, no agent is going to agree to that, you know, no. because if you're 16th, 17th in the table, there's a chance you're going to go down. So it was a really Villa Villa kind of as as we get back to that point again. I mean, not bought anybody in last summer. You know, they didn't have the best bargaining position mm. this month. I think they've done the best the best they could. Samata was there, it was a deal they could, could do. Yeah. They started off looking at experienced players, Olivia Giroud, Michi Bashwai. But you know, come the middle of the month they realised we need to get someone in. Samata, they scouted him, they liked him, the deal was there to be done. And they did it. But I think the plan was always to bring in somebody more experienced mm. take the pressure off him. I would argue with Borgia Baston, they've not really done that. Mm. They've bought in cover. They've not bought somebody who's going to particularly take the pressure off Samata to to deliver. Mm. So there is a lot on his shoulders now. Yeah, certainly is. Right, Borja Baston, the man in at Villa on deadline day for all the latest on him and Villa. Measure his day with expressingstar.com.